Hello and welcome back to the Eyes of Old Gaming channel. Thank you so much for being here. Today I have another older game in my What Is It? and Is It Worth It? game review series. In this video I will go through the various aspects of the game, trying my best to avoid spoilers for new players, and give examples of similar games as well as my personal opinion as to whether I would recommend the game with a thumbs up or thumbs down, and if I personally enjoyed it. I won't be giving a number rating to the game, as many other channels do, as I find this to be a very arbitrary way of rating games, which like any other entertainment is completely subjective, and instead I prefer to give enough info for you to make a decision on your own if you would like to go forward with picking up this title for yourself. Today's game we are looking at is Lords of the Fallen, an action RPG developed by Deck 13 Interactive and CI Games. I was released back in 2014, so this game is at least six years old by the time you're watching this. Uh, so let's see how it's held up over that time and if it's still worth it today and what it's all about. Lords of the Fallen will put you in control of the character Harkin, uh, where you are tasked with killing demons and taking out the main leaders of the demonic invasion uh, known as the Rogar Lords. Without giving away too much of the story, you start out as a criminal who is then released to seek redemption through service in battle with the invading demonic monsters and lords. So you start off by picking your magic type, which is broken into Brawling, Deception, and Solace, uh, which grants powers which correspond with the equipment type of Warrior, Rogue, and Cleric. Um, so, however, the game does not force you to pick the equipment type that seems to go with the magic types, and you can instead mix and match with any combination of the two choices that you prefer. After choosing which magic and equipment types you want for your version of Harkin, uh, you're treated to a very intriguing cutscene battle, and the game kicks off with a tutorial zone of sorts. Fallen God, creator and destroyer of worlds, hear my vow. <laughs> Monasteries ahead. I wonder if it is still safe. Either way, our quest for Antanas nears a conclusion. I hope he's worth all the men we've lost on our way here. Um, the combat can be a stiff learning curve. Your movement and your character combat feels extremely slow and clunky. I was playing on console and found the controls to be quite strange in that things such as drinking a potion and switching to another item are actually the same button, 
um, where switching is a short press and using is a long press, which can sometimes be difficult in the moment. So basically what you do is uh, if you do a long press, he'll actually take a drink of the potion, uh, whereas if you do a short press, he's going to switch to a different item. So it can be, uh, if you're in the middle of a battle, it can be quite difficult to uh, choose which one you want between those two. However, once the basics are learned and you practice your particular style, combat with individual monsters can be a lot of fun. Um, that said, I found the combat with boss level enemies and lords to be much more of a frustration than enjoyable. Uh, typically boss battles will devolve into just learning the specific patterns and exploiting that particular weakness. So to me this feels extremely gamey and most times when fighting a boss I felt like I was just cheesing the game or fighting the program code rather than actually being immersed in battle with an enemy monster. Um, in my opinion the boss battles also tend to drag on for far too long and they actually become rather boring, you're just dodging and hitting the same enemy over and over and over. Uh, sometimes for more than 20 minutes depending on how much grinding you had done um, before you actually reach this point in the game. So we actually move on to the next point which is the grind. Um, as you kill enemies you will gain experience and the more enemies you kill in a row the higher the experience point multiplier is. Uh, this experience is not usable in its raw form and you must actually first find a save point to distribute your experience to the various skills. Um, also saving your progress will reset your experience multiplier giving you an incentive to push your luck and not just save constantly. When you do die, you respawn at your most recent save point and lose any experience that you have not distributed. Uh, this can be recovered by finding the place of your death and picking up your experience from the ghost that remains. Um, and just as a fair warning, be prepared to die a lot. You're going to die over and over and over again. Um, so there's a lot of uh, going back and finding your ghost and collecting that lost experience. Um, and there's also, it's a good idea to support your So the other frustration that happens when you die is that all the enemies which you had killed will also respawn. Uh, so this can be extremely frustrating, but it's also usually necessary as you'll need to kill enemies sometimes many times in an area to grind your experience to a level up to a point where you're actually capable of continuing the story. So the words grinding and frustration come up many times while playing this game. An interesting mechanic in the game is after killing a specific boss type monster, uh, certain challenge portals will actually open that allow you to travel to a shadowy area um, and then you can go in there and collect rewards. Uh, watch out when you do go in though because uh, when you actually return everything that you killed to get up to that point is going to respawn as well. Alright, so in terms of graphics, I felt that they really do hold up quite well after this many years. Um, I found no problems with the quality and the environment seemed to be especially well done. Um, I really didn't care for the character model style or NPCs as they have that same kind of really bulky armor and style that's similar to games like Warcraft. Uh, and I know that this is completely subjective and I'm sure many people are going to disagree as they probably prefer that style. Um, but I typically prefer character and armor styles in a way um, like the Witcher series or light armor in the Elder Scrolls is done. Uh, things that are a little bit more form-fitting, I would say. All in all, there's very little to complain about in terms of the graphics, and they're still really great by today's standards for this type of game. The story in the game is really quite interesting, although it does feel unexplained as you're playing. Um, although this actually adds some interest to the game as I found that I was trying to find out more of what was actually going on as you're not told everything and you need to really pay attention to gain story insights. There's also scrolls that are going to be found all over the game in different zones uh, which they play the audio of the author and they'll actually offer you some more flavor and insight into the world and what's actually going on. Not feel like poison in my veins, more like liquid. 
we have seen with others what happens next. Eyesight goes first, then follows Sana. Brother William, Brother Peter and I won't let the disease take us. We will choose death before it chooses us. In terms of games that I would compare to, the obvious choice is Dark Souls, as many of the bosses are going to follow the similar, extremely challenging style. Um, they're still killable with good pattern recognition and memorization, and the aesthetically the NPCs are similar to games like Gears of War or Warcraft, uh, where all of the NPCs seem to be built like a fridge with giant armor and weapons that are extremely fantasy style rather than a functional looking style. So now for the really hard part, um, what I actually recommend the game. Um, I don't want to sound too wishy-washy, but it's sort of a yes and a no. I did f have fun in some parts of the game, and I found the story really quite interesting and compelling. Um, I have a hard time recommending this game though, as it is extremely frustrating. And I found for most of the game I was not really enjoying it, and that the joy that I got was typically from defeating an overly difficult boss character, and knowing that I would not have to do that again. I felt no desire to replay or revisit any areas and was just happy to be done with them. I think my recommendation really comes down to what your mentality going into games is. Um, if you like to relax and unplug from the world and just have fun with the game, getting immersed or pulled into a story, I really don't think this game is for you. However, if your favorites are typically like the extremely challenging, um, lots of pattern recognition and memorization, You'll probably get a lot out of this game, um, and you could find it quite enjoyable. Uh, typically this game rewards you for finding a pattern and sticking to the strategy for that pattern. Uh, freewheeling and improvisation is typically punished, so it is pretty clear if this game is going to be tight for you or not. So I really hope that you enjoyed the video and it helped you decide if you're considering making a purchasing decision. If so, please give the video a like and also consider subscribing to the channel for more gaming content. I really appreciate it and it inspires me to continue making content. Uh, please also let me know in the comments what you thought, maybe you agree with my assessment or you had a completely different take on it. Uh, either way, I'd love to hear your opinions as well. And also if there's any other games that you'd like to have me review, please let me know that in the comments as well. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. As always, take care.